November could be a hectic month for launches to the moon. Yes, that's launches, plural. If there was any skepticism on whether the world had entered a new space race, the dueling lunar-bound liftoffs coming next month could be the smoking gun. After NASA waved off two launch attempts in early August and early September, followed by a delay courtesy of Hurricane Ian, the US Space Agency will try again to send up its first Artemis mission on November 14th with backup dates of November 16th and 19th. That period overlaps with that of another mission, lesser known in the United States, but also slated to leave from its soil. A Japanese commercial company focused on building moon landers called iSpace plans to launch on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket between November 9th and 15th. This first mission of the Hakuto-R program would carry cargo from several customers and put two rovers from the Emirati and Japanese space programs on the moon. We recognize that NASA's Artemis SLS's launch is scheduled during the same time frame, and we believe this sends the message that a new era is opening for the cis-lunar economy with these two historic missions, one government and one commercial. Cis-lunar is the region of space between Earth and the moon, including the area around the moon. NASA happens to also be one of iSpace's customers, hoping to receive moon dust samples from the private lander's trip. If the Tokyo-based company succeeds, it would be the first to land a Japanese spacecraft on the moon. What's more, it could be the first successful private delivery of cargo to the lunar surface ever. In 2019, an Israeli company crashed into the moon and may have scattered some intriguing artifacts. Brad Joliffe, director of the McDonald Center for the Space Sciences at Washington University in St. Louis, believes the next five years will be chock full of commercial missions to perform landings, lug cargo to the moon, and facilitate science experiments. There's a business case for the moon, Joliffe told Mashable. This new era of lunar exploration and travel won't be done entirely by NASA. It will be done with international partners and with commercial partners. Both US-made rockets, Artemis' mega space launch system and SpaceX's Falcon 9, will take their moonshots from Kennedy Space Center on the Florida coast, firing their engines at launch pads about six miles apart. It's even conceivable that they could both lift off within 24 hours of each other. The Space Force, which oversees the spaceport operations in Cape Canaveral, Florida, has already supported a 2 in 24 launch posture this year, said Heather Scott, a spokeswoman for the agency's Eastern Range. The team assisted two launches in the span of 13 hours on August 4th, the fastest since 1967. The command aims to support a launch when the customer needs to launch, Scott told Mashable. While one launch a week was the goal just a few years ago, the range can support two launches in a single day. NASA's Artemis I mission sets out to be the agency's first deep space flight of a capsule built to carry astronauts in half a century. If all goes according to plan, the Orion spacecraft will travel more than a quarter million miles from Earth, including a 40,000 mile swing past the moon on a whirling journey. No one will be inside Orion for this ride, but a successful, uncrewed test flight would clear the way for up to four passengers aboard the spaceship on Artemis II. That flight is currently scheduled for 2024. Under the new program, NASA is preparing for a revival of human-led space exploration, an era that ended in 1972 with the final Apollo flight. Since then, hundreds of astronauts flew into space aboard the agency's legendary shuttles, but they stayed in orbit around Earth. Future deep space plans include building a lunar orbiting moon base, seeing the first woman and person of color to walk on the moon's surface, and learning how to sustain life there for long periods, all while keeping one eye fixed on the red planet some 140 million miles in the distance. The idea is to use what astronauts learn on the moon to eventually get to Mars. NASA is targeting as early as 12.07 a.m. Eastern on November 14th for its third crack at Artemis 1. It's a narrow launch window in the dead of night that closes one hour and nine minutes later. That doesn't buy the agency a whole lot of extra wiggle room in the countdown to troubleshoot unexpected problems. The first Artemis attempt was scrubbed after the launch crew discovered an engine that appeared not to be cooling fuel properly. After the team investigated the issue, NASA determined the problem was an inaccurate sensor, not unchilled fuel. During the second try, launch controllers encountered a large hydrogen fuel leak at the base of the rocket that couldn't be stopped. 
The NASA announcement of a new launch timeline in mid-November also comes with a reconfigured spaceflight, from 42 days to 25 days. The shortened mission would involve Orion flying a half lap instead of one and a half laps around the moon in a wide orbit, before returning to Earth in the Pacific Ocean on December 9th. The length of the mission isn't arbitrary. NASA looks at the date and the timing of the Sun, Earth, and Moon's alignment to determine the schedule. Crucial factors like the forces of gravity and conditions in the atmosphere influence what time of day Orion would return, and dictate whether the agency would pursue the six-week mission versus the four-week mission. The team needs daylight when the capsule splashes down to aid its water recovery. Though spending more time orbiting the moon would give NASA more data, mission leaders say they can still meet their goals. We will be able to accomplish all of our mission objectives on a short class mission. They're just closer together, said Rick Lebrode, lead Artemis One flight director. While the rocket is in storage, maintenance crews are making minor repairs to insulation foam and recharging batteries on board the rocket and for pieces of cargo. The agency plans to haul SLS back out to the launch pad on November 4th. Though the NASA and SpaceX rockets are trying to leave Earth around the same time next month, iSpace's private mission is expected to take a lot longer to reach its destination. Using a lengthy lunar trajectory to save on fuel costs, the mission wouldn't land on the moon for another three to four months. If they do land, which would be a challenging feat, they'll certainly make history.